so now we'll discuss about the next one module 2 infra security for cloud computing okay so basically it covers the cloud secure domain domain 7 domain 8 and domain 13 okay out of the 14 domains it will cover okay. the domain 7 domain 8 and domain 13 okay in this domain we'll discuss about the basic components of cloud infrastructure or how are the factors or what are the baselines we have to keep in mind for securing the infra what are the security constraints we have in See the definitely when talk about deployment models, public or private or hybrid or community, we have a lot of security imp implications. What are that that we will discuss, and then we will discuss about the okay. advantages and drawbacks of having this kind of infrastructure and how. See, there is, so this point is very much important. Most people don't care about this, but this point is very important. I'll tell you an example. In a very simple mm -hmm. words, I can I can give you the strategy. See this. Let's say for example, now we can see that I am currently in my AWS management console. So how do I log into this AWS mm -hmm. management console? Once I type AWS, once I type the URL, then I what then what will I do? Put your credentials. Okay, let's say I have put my credentials and assume that all my company's data all my company's information all my company servers from a to z of my company's it infrastructure is running in this particular cloud cloud account okay so what okay. let's say for example varun is doing everything so what happens if krish is a malicious person and krish is able to get varun's credentials if krish is able to fetch varun's credential he can compromise the complete company right first that is why this console is basically we can say as a single point of failure single point of failure why because mm -hmm. by then what happens is everything can be easily compromised got it we will study about the mechanisms or strategies which we are we can protect the cloud management plane okay then we okay. will basically have the different uh, the different security strategies for the cloud service models also this is okay. what we are planning for now okay and so basically we have enough time we have uh, enough uh, resources okay what you can do is so in every day what i'm planning is so securing the base infrastructure okay so basically when i talk about the cloud infra security okay so when managing a cloud whether a public or private or whatever it is okay there are basically three underlying components that need to be locked down to ensure that the users have a chance of having a secure cloud experience okay we have multiple things but we have to keep this in mind first one is we have to make sure okay we have to make sure we have enough security for the management plane so basically they have a network they have some hypervisors they have some infra components which everything will run on and we mm -hmm. have a management plane so basically the management plane and the orchestration orchestration layer is basically we can say it as a single single line so what happens is mm -hmm. so each component of this each part of this requires different levels of access controls and have different security requirements i'll give an example so let's say see in this course i am not or basically the I, cloud security alliance is not talking about in the perspective of customer only we are talking all these things yeah. in the perspective of cloud service provider also so okay. i am assuming that i am the cloud service provider i am assuming that i am the consumer so basically in both levels we have okay. discussed so let's say for example okay. the hypervisor so in any cloud model let's say if it's ias or pass or any cloud service mm -hmm. model hypervisor is handled always with a cloud service provider only not the customer yeah. right why because basically yeah. okay. hypervisor don't have visibility but in that case yeah. they must follow some standards so they must follow some proper mechanisms to make sure this hypervisor is 100 percent secured as per the standards okay yeah. that's it okay so we discuss that and then we have a network the network basically it's a shared responsibility but what happens is still the network also like i'll give an example so the way you can secure the cloud infra is the first one you can basically restrict the access to the cloud management plane so you have to restrict the access to the cloud management plane and always enforce things like multi-factor authentication that means that uh, what is mm -hmm. multi-factor authentication so let's say let me write down here so we have a word called as multi-factor authentication okay so let me explain yes. these three, yes. three words mm -hmm. now first word is authentication second is authorization third is accountability so we have three yeah. words we have a authentication we have a authorization we have accountability so let's say i am going to console.aws.amazon.com as an example so let's say i basically go to this i enter my credentials let's say for example i enter my username and i enter my password okay I enter my username and I enter my password. So basically, when I enter my password, so I'm entering my password here. Okay. So what happens yeah. is when I enter my username and password, I am claiming that I'm Krish. So right. I enter my password and I verify my claim that I'm Krish. So basically, this will be verified by a database which contains the user information. That once it is verified, yeah. the user is authenticated. So authentication means okay. verifying the identity. Is it clear? That's yeah. it. The next is we have something called as authorization. Authorization means, let's say, for example, 
what level of access I have in it. So basically what happens is if you log into AWS account or Azure account in a default username and password, you will have 100% access, but giving the 100% mm -hmm. access is not recommended, right? So basically we have some words here. The first one is need to know. The second is least privilege. So I'll tell you the difference. So basically uh, in AWS also AWS in AWS we have something called as IAM identity and access management in Azure we call it as mm -hmm. Azure AD but not the uh, on-premises active directory it's a different one so okay. in AWS we okay. have something called as IAM and AWS we have something called as Azure AD okay so Azure we have something okay. called as Azure AD so what happens is these are the solutions which will help us for all these three things okay, okay. let me let's let's take an example we have user one uh, we have user two and we have user three and we have user four we have user five we have so basically I have six users in my team so let's say user sorry user one guy is the developer user one is the developer so let's say this guy is the developer this guy is the operations this guy is the okay. testing this guy belong to the uh, security so this guy belong to compliance and regulatory frameworks compliance and finally the last one is guys the I admin so basically what happens is see we have user one who is a developer user two who is operations guy who is a three is a testing guy so basically we have different different people and that, that that means that these user guys must have different different levels of privilege right yeah that means that basically let's say for example if i take the example of user one user one is a developer so he must have a restricted access to those services which we basically have to understand as so for example let's say for for this guy he need to have access to aws s3 aws uh, rds so a few services so basically mm -hmm. i have to make sure he will get that level of access only so these are the user accounts okay. we can create in a single account okay so in this in a single aws account we can create multiple users mm -hmm. so what happens is i can I, ha I have a user one i basically make sure this user one is having only privilege of the, the development team so what happens the first okay. one for author the first factor we have to consider for authorization is okay the word mm -hmm. called as need to know need to know means need to know means what a all yeah what all permissions is required for the user to perform yeah. his job so don't confuse the word word is it, it's a phrase actually okay so basically what happens is so what see let's say varun is joining my company when varun is joining my company i have to understand that what all permissions does varun require let's say for example okay i understood that varun belongs to the team called as developers so varun need permission for uh storage varun need permission for network like this i have to identify what all permissions is required for the user to perform a job that's what you call us need to know and least privilege means Right. give the precise minimum that means that right. give only the minimum level of permission he required to job do the job so this must be verified also in between okay. so basically why it is it must be verified so it must be verified because of the first reason the first reason it must be verified is let's say there is a word called as authorization creep this is very common actually it means that let's say now varun joins my company in the op operations team okay he got access for operations group so that when when he's a member of operations group what happens he will basically have all the you know all the permissions required for the on the operations team okay so what happens is so basically mm -hmm. he got promoted to the secops team security operations team okay so mm -hmm. i am adding him to the secops group so what happens is now let's say Varun is in join the company and basically what happens is Varun is having uh, access to the operations group. So that means that Varun is able to or mm -hmm. Varun is basically able to do all the job in the operations team. So let's say Varun is working hard and he is basically able to or he basically promote to the SecOps team security operations team. In that case, I will basically relieve him from this team and basically add him to the SecOps team, right? Got it. So okay. what about the problem? Not like team, but the pro the problem which came here is everything is fine. But the problem which came here is I added Varun to the group called a SecOps, but I didn't remove the access of the old group. See what happens? Okay. So now he is getting the required permissions for SecOps groups, but still he is having some permission which he don't must not have. See this this issue okay. is called as authorization creep, getting more permission than they require. Okay. By these kind of issues is what I call as authorization mm -hmm. creep. Okay, word is very much important. Okay. You have. Yeah, both word. Okay. 
so basically what happens is yep. so we so the the we have some basic basic things we can do the basic thing we can do is for securing the cloud is first one restrict the access using uh, access and use multi-factor authentication so basically what is multi-factor authentication so multi-factor authentication or mfa means let's say we have three kind of authentication mechanism something you know something yep. you have and let's say something you are yep. so let's say for example uh, let's take an example for this basically if i say something you know so it means that password <coughs> pin yeah pattern something like that but at the same time something you have is let's say otp or let's say token generation etc something you are means basically the biometrics the fingerprint etc right so let me let me give an example so varun tries to log in okay ask for this fingerprint once authenticated okay or once fingerprint is verified they ask to read a text okay so for then the mm -hmm. first step varun is basically varun is basically demanded to basically put the finger in the fingerprint scanner once it is verified then he is basically required to read a text okay is it multi factor authentication yep. is it it's not multi factor authentication why because if i want to say multi factor authentication it must have any two of this don't forget either it must be these two or these two or something it must mm -hmm. have any two of this so now what is the problem here okay. fingerprint and voice recognition is basically the biometrics only right so instead of this if i am asking him for the password plus otp or password plus biometrics i like that it can be more secure right so what happens is basically yeah. when I, if i want to say multi-factor authentication i have to make sure it must have any two of this at least that's it so yeah got it the way we can basically secure the aws server account or any account is first of all restrict the access use and use mfa multi-factor authentication the second thing is only use a secure network to connect a secure like vpn etc network to connect okay. to aws or cloud account these are the two primary ways which we can basically secure the access to the cloud okay first one is only limit okay. the access and basically use mfa and make sure it's access from a secure network not from every public hotspots and all now you know this picture very much right you know how ias works this is a very basic stylized representation of this is computer and storage okay so the whole point is the core of the compute is basically the virtual machines these are the virtual machines okay the core of the compute is basically the virtual machines which is here see this so they are running in the hypervisor deployed in multiple physical servers yep. okay the compute controller basically handles the management and orchestration so basically sending the vms to run whatever there is resources and basically moving the resources from one vm to one physical machine to another so they take care of everything like the same way we have a storage mm -hmm. pool also when i say the word storage pool what happens is so basically the storage pool we don't have uh, we don't have a hypervisor instead of that we have storage managed or basically we can call us storage controller okay we have storage controllers which will basically help us to mm -hmm. allocate the amount of storage so tomorrow if a customer is requesting for a vm the cpu and compute capacity is taken from this particular thing and the storage is taken from this thing so by then the customer will get a vm okay that's it now you know tell me the, the actual difference between this public and private in this diagram so what happens in the public what what you what is only visible to you these guys got it basically you don't have any visibility to the underlying pool or hypervisor or anything or a storage pool to request for vms you'll get the vms that's all okay so uh, so this is basically to uh, give you more idea on the additional components in one ball like when i say the word controller can be compute controller or storage controller there is an api server so api server means that what happens is let's say whatever things i am doing i am doing an api call that we discussed yesterday right like what happens is basically yeah. uh, when i yeah whatever things i am doing see anything it can be any operations i am doing let's say for example i go to my console or yeah. let's take azure also I don't want to basically have only one flavor. Okay, so in any cloud platform, in AWS or Azure or Google, any cloud platform, what basically happens is, see, I go to this particular console here. I am going to create a storage or I am going to create a volume, delete something, modify something, copy something. So whatever operations I am doing, it's an API call, which is running doing the background. Let's say, for example, yep. see, I'm going to create a storage here, just a storage only, not the cloud cloud complete. Let's say I basically mm -hmm. go to the volume mm -hmm. and I'm going to create a virtual hard disk. So it's very simple. I click on create volume here. So when I do this thing here, 
what doing here is i am basically doing an api call there must be a server which will basically able to respond all these things right that's good that guy is called as an api server yep. and we have a message queue basically Agreed. which will help us to yeah, process the request step by step like the messages or request i'm getting it must be processed step by step so that that, that is basically what we call as message queue then we have a database to store all this information okay. of the request and everything then definitely you know mm -hmm. we have a hypervisor mm -hmm. the hypervisor is something which is very important to understand then we yeah. have network so basically network we have a lot of things like this so vran is fine dhcp is fine so this guy is something which you have to definitely go through security groups then we can have a volume management basically how we can create the volumes and raw storage i'll give you the difference between these two in the coming storage topic then we have something called as a image service so image service is not the normal image service let's say for example let me show you an example here so i'll tell you my request so what happens is now you can see that i have an instance here okay this is my practical example i'm telling you so you can see that i'm having a instance here just give me a second i'm having an instance here okay so what happens is you can see that this guy is using this current this guy is using or let's say uh, so i have basically configured a kali linux machine here okay so what happens is i have configured kali linux and i have given to my team member called as current and he what he done is he basically log into this machine and he has made a lot of customizations he has made a lot of custom configurations so next time okay we want to, or if we want to deploy one more machine like this again i have to deploy a vm again this guy has to basically log in and do all the customization mm -hmm. it is not practically mm -hmm. recommended that is where we create a image of it that okay. means that i can create an image of this once i create a image next time if i want what i can do is i can basically click on launch instance i can click on my amis there is a window here called as my amis i can click on my amis here see this is a custom ami i created this is okay. a custom i created some years some months back so what happens is next time if i call this all the configurations he has done on the other machine will be there in this image it, it's a pre-configured okay. image like for example in your laptop you have installed everything in your laptop you are configured and you're taking image mm -hmm. of your laptop of OS. so what happens is next time right. the laptop right. matches, yeah you can replace the hardest can copy and paste this image what happens everything is completely restored right so there is an it's image basically. service you can see that see this it accepts the api request for disk or server images and the metadata from the user so what happens so basically this image service help us to store the images from different different volumes or the instances and we have a identity service this identity service in aws is basically called as uh, iam in azure we called as uh, azure ad mm -hmm. so like we have different different okay. identity services like octa is there oem is a lot of identity providers are there mm -hmm. that's it